You guys just go whatever you want. Hey everyone, welcome to the- Oh, like now? <laughs> oh, yeah, uh... <laughs> False start. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the Fargo 3D Printing Show today. Uh, Jay Clark, John Schneider, and Eric Faldi um, on the show today. So we're going to talk a lot about SLS. A lot about it. A lot about it. A lot about it. A lot about it. <laughs> and uh, No accents whatsoever over here, guys. <laughs> and then we're going to uh, um, talk about one of our employees, Marcus, has started a project called a hang printer. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. So, John, do you yeah. want to kick off what we saw um, from Form Labs? This, yeah. This so, uh, so earlier this week, uh, Form Labs had their what was it called? The Digital Factory. Uh, so basically, this event unveiling a couple of new products. So earlier this year, uh, Form Labs unveiled two new products, which were uh, more for post processing of SLA. And when they announced those, they started teasing something new that they was that was going to mm -hmm. be coming. They mm -hmm. said it was something different. It just a very, uh, very kind of, I don't, I don't know, very teasery type yeah, website. It, it was just it was like, a, you know, an image of the printer. Something, in the background something, very... something, something shadowy. 28 days. It had yeah. a, a time, like, I think we were actually at, uh, we were at Next Yes, Next I think we were. Labs. I forget what they're exactly Next going labs. by, but we were there, and then someone said, oh, I just got a message about a new form thing. It's like, oh, they're going to do like a automation thing. He's like, oh no, it's a printer. Like, yeah. Oh. So there was some speculation there on what oh. this printer was going to be. Someone's, you know, some people said, oh, maybe it's a, uh, maybe they're dipping their toes into FDM, which to me doesn't make a whole lot of sense, um, especially since they've kind of knocked FDM for quite a while. They, you know, SLA, that's what Formlabs is known for. They brought desktop SLA really into the market. Um, they, uh, there were some people that said maybe it's a metal printer. Well, there was some People that said, "Okay, well, Jake based on said the picture, it was an SLS printer." I said I was hoping it was an SLS. I printer. said it was, and I was hoping that it was going to be an SLS printer for sub ten thousand dollars. You look at what they did for, and, and we'll get to the pricing in a little bit. But you look at what Formlabs did for SLA. Yes. They took a machine that before I don't know what do you think SLA cost before then? It was probably in the thirty thousand so plus. There's range. a printer that we saw, and I believe. I'm not going to quote him on it, but um, he was, he was going to let it go for about a quarter million. That was the... That's SLS. We're talking SLA. Oh, I'm not listening. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm sorry. I'm trying um, to send you something. SLA, SLA you're looking at anywhere between probably 120 to 700,000, depending on the model. Yeah, I, I'd say at the time that the Form the form 1 came out, it was about that. So for a little bit of perspective, the uh, the Form 2, which is Form Lab's current SLA printer, is I believe it's like 3,400 somewhere in there. I know Let's see what, the way that the way that we purchased it, which was with um, some accessories, a bunch of ROM or a bunch of uh, resins, a bunch of materials. It was about 4,500 dollars. So 4,500 dollars for a basically turnkey system works really nicely. So on Monday, Form Labs announced the Fuse One. This was the printer that they had been teasing for quite a while. Now the Fuse One is an SLS printer that starts at starts at nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. No, so no. technically. Technically, you can get this printer for under ten thousand dollars. Now, the way you're going to want to have it equipped, which is with a spare material chamber and all of the post-processing equipment a and mixer. this, yep, a mixer and the Clean, startup and startup resin. Station. Yeah, yep, I yeah. mentioned that. Oh, okay. Uh, you're looking at nineteen thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars, so twenty thousand dollars, which is still a pretty pretty amazing thing for a uh, well, for an looking, SLS system. Well, yeah. Because yeah. for an industrial type SLS machine, you're looking at, well, what is it? It's about that. Well, I, I, pulled up, I pulled up your, your SLA thing. So with like a ProJet 7000 7, HD, you're looking at about $250,000 roughly for an SLA. So I'll compare that to your Form Labs. So then I'll, uh, I'll look up the, uh, um, I, need to I need to remember the brand that we saw. Oh, so it was It is 3D Systems. 3D Systems. It was an S Pro 60, but I can't find much on that one. I'm S finding Pro. the HD HS, which is the newest one. I, I do know that it is in about that quarter million yeah, dollar range. Yeah, so that, that's what so I was hearing. So you're comparing $250,000 to $20,000. And now, to be fair, the build size is going to be different. The amount of materials you can be using is different. So just I'm going to do a quick rundown on the on the Fuse One. So the Fuse One has a build area slightly larger than just because I don't remember the exact dimensions. I actually about, do have that. Is uh, do you have an inch? Do you have an inches? I don't. I yeah, have a converter I can use. Yeah, but it's approximately like six by six by twelve, like Jake said. Yeah. About so the size it, of a rep replicator two build volume if you tipped it on its side. Yeah. So that's 165, still, 165, three, 320. Yeah, in millimeters. Mm -hmm. So it is a pretty substantial build area for the price and, and for the capabilities. Now remember, with an SLS machine, it's not just 
you don't just put something on the build platform and that's all you can build. So if we take a look at this model that we have here, you can't put, you know, this is for in a pretty large build volume, but you can't put anything else within this envelope. It's pretty much once with, with FDM. With, yeah, with FDM. Now with SLS, you can stack, you can nest, you can do all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So take a, uh, imagine you made a dress entirely out of chain mail. You could take that entire dress and fold it down. Who is that? <laughs> Is that, that is, is that... our truck driver, and oh. I'm gonna have to step out. Okay, give me one second. Wow, you made quite the entrance. <laughs> he's, he's a character. All right, I, I said plug yours. Right, okay. Right, I'll, I'll be right. You can okay. keep your own. Okay. Keep going. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> that was my it's like an old, old. That was Confer an Santa. Cough. Yeah. <laughs> so back to SLS. Uh, the form. Um, Form Labs Fuse One, so six by six by twelve inch build volume. Um, it's the colors of nylon that it can work with. It's just dark colors, and there's a couple reasons why it's only using like a black nylon, and it's nylon eleven and nylon twelve. So you do have two different types of nylon out at the get go, and they're working on more materials. But the reason that they're able to make this printer under twenty thousand dollars for the system, and you don't need to have a specialized power source, so it plugs into just standard one twenty. You're going to want to have, or 110, 120, you're going to want to have a uh, dedicated circuit for it, you know, 15 amps, but standard power, nothing special, standard plug, and you don't need to have any sort of gas hookups. So where a lot of SLS machines, you flood the chamber with inert gas, something like nitrogen, to make it so that the chamber is not as combustible. With the Fuse 1, the temperature doesn't get as hot as it does with uh, other SLS machines. Yeah, I have a, so I actually have a picture from this old printer that I was talking about. It's the one that we saw when we were at 3D Printing Ally. Those okay. videos are going to come out eventually. But we have a, uh, this is the uh, poster for the safety, I'll share this out, um, the poster for the safety setting up that, that printer. And it's a uh, little intense. It's substantial. Yeah. It's substantial. We, no. got, uh, we got nitrogen tanks, nitrogen duars, I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, a lot of hookups and... Just stuff that makes me afraid to want to hook it up. It's just like scary. Temperature, right. temperature stuff. This one seems like it's a lot more just stripped down. And with a lot of the bigger SLS machines, you want to have a dedicated room to mm. it. It is messy. You know, the cleanup, the post-processing is a little bit messy. That's now, not necessarily changing with this. Yeah, no, it's still messy, but it's cleaner. It's not quite as messy. So Formlab says, oh, you can have it in an office setting. I don't know that you'd want to. That's not to say you need to have a dedicated room that's only for SLS processing, but I think you'd want to have a dedicated 3D printer room that you're putting this in. I mean, it is the size of a small refrigerator because it is still a heated chamber. It does bring up the temperature to just below the melting point, but you don't need to have as powerful of a laser because it's a darker material. It's able to absorb the laser energy more, more readily. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, that's why at, you know, coming out of the gate, it's only going to be black materials. Now, when you look at how the printer operates, it does have a completely removable chamber. So one of the things with SLS is you need to wait for your parts to cool down before you can do a lot of post-processing with them because yeah, it is very hot. I mean, it was basically you just took these parts out of an oven. You know, it's heated up to 100 plus degrees Celsius. And then you have the laser that is going along and heating the part up, melting this plastic together. So it's going to be hot. Um, and before you need to wait for the your printer to cool down entirely and then remove the chamber. Or I don't even know how it would work with the S-Pro. Um, um, I don't know if it I has think, a removable I don't chamber I don't think or that not. Will, I don't believe. I don't believe so. But with the fuse one, I think they use a vacuum setup for that. I'm not just right I there. Don't, I don't recall. Because with the fuse one, you take out the entire build chamber, and then you're able to put in an entirely new build chamber. Start the start the preheating process, which I think takes an hour or two hours. I think it says yeah, it on the says setup sheet. time is one hour. Yeah, so you need to wait for an hour for everything to get heated up before you can start a new print. But then you take that old chamber, you take it to the cleaning station. It basically Imagine imagine you have, uh, imagine this is your cleaning station, so you put your entire build chamber here, it tips it up, and then you hook the power up to it, so it actually pushes all the powder out into a bed that has mesh on it, so it's a downdraft table, it sucks up all of the, uh, all of the used up, uh, res or not resin, but the nylon powder, and then you're also able to, you know, brush it off. I think there's going to be an air compressor so you can blow the, blow the excess dust, o dust off your print, and then all of that uh, used powder gets collected down into a uh, down into I don't know what it's called basically a canister yeah. and so with this SLS machine they say you shouldn't use more than 50% used uh, SLS powder so okay how do you mix that 50% used powder with the virgin powder well so you take your 
uh, your canister of the used powder, which you pull out of this post-processing machine. You take a canister of new powder, you put them both up on a mixing machine, which is included in this $20,000 kit, and then you can control the ratios at which they're mixed. It can be 50% used, it can be 80% used, it can be 10% used. The amount of, uh, or the percentage of used material is going to dictate your surface finish. More used material means you can have a rougher surface finish, and it may not be as strong of a part. Yeah, More virgin, stronger part. Yeah, all the powder has to be heated up to almost, I think it's 10 degrees below, I'm, I'm guessing that's Celsius. Um, it's almost the temperature that it's melting at. Right. And then that, you know, it's going to degrade it to an ex a certain extent, yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah, because the laser is just giving, that, giving it the extra little kick. So yeah. it's not like you're sitting there with the laser focusing for a while waiting for it to get hot. It's already hot. The laser just kind of nudges it over its melting point. And yeah, there is a limitation on how many heating and cooling cycles this material can yeah. go through before it starts to, starts to degrade. It just won't have the same physical properties. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, things I'm seeing here, I'll just quickly read over things yeah. I find interesting. Um, Startup time, 60 minutes. Uh, it has the dimensions, I don't know this in, uh, in... It's not a very big printer. I mean, I'd say it's about the size of it's a... It's like a small refrigerator. Yeah, like a, like a, like a dorm fridge, like kind of... Yeah, bigger than a mini fridge, yeah. but smaller than... Like one of those uh, kind of taller mini fridges. Yeah. Or uh, let's say like around the size of a washing machine. Not quite the same dimensions, but about yeah, the same. Yeah, more like a, like a short over-under washing machine yeah. combo. Uh, that's what so I, I, I think we're getting, I think yeah. we're getting close <laughs> to the overall yeah. size, but um, any, anything if, else? If you understand uh, metric, it's 677 by 668 by 1059 millimeters. Uh, and then it, it prints at 10 millimeters an hour, and the layer thickness is 100 microns. Yeah, so they say um, there was someone in the Reddit thread that was, uh, I think it actually might have been, uh, well, what's the founder's name? Joshua Tobolowski or something like that. He, uh, he hopped in the Reddit thread and was kind of clarifying a few things. So the, the laser spot size, I think, is it's 200 micron, or maybe it's 100 micron. Anyway, he mentioned that the minimum feature size um, on the uh, on the models are going to be 200 micron. So you're going to need to have something 200 micron for it to even show up. Um, but yeah, 100 micron layer height. I don't think you're able to have a variable layer height at all. I think it's just the one yeah, setting I of would, 100, I would, I 100 know micron. About that. Yeah. Um, let's see what else was interesting about this. So there's uh, there's no window built into the printer, but there's a camera built on the mm, inside. Yeah, that is really cool. Now the reason for that, so the camera you're able to view by by a big touch screen on the top. Uh, can you see if you can pull up dimensions on that touch screen? I don't know if it's in the spec sheet or not. But the reason that they have a camera instead of a window is the window was causing too much thermal inconsistency. I'm just so going to eyeball it and was, say it's uh, like four by six out. inches. Yeah, I mean that looks... That's just my best guess. That looks about right. Yeah. That looks about right. That was not on the tech sheet because that's not extremely Yeah, and they have a, and they've got more information on the website now yeah. than they did on the launch date. So it's... If you it's scroll all the way to the this. bottom, you'll see a tech sheet. Yeah, and one other thing about the printer is you can actually add models to the build as you're already printing. Ooh, okay. So let's say so let's say you're building uh, version one of a part, and it gets to you know it's halfway through printing version one, and you realize, hey, we should actually here's another thing that we want to test. Let's throw version two in here as well. Now instead of having to wait for it to cool down a little bit, pulling the cartridge out, putting a whole new build thing in there, and having to go through two cleaning processes, you can just say, all right. Model one is about halfway done. We're going to add model two to this build, and as long as it's above, as long as you add it above where your existing part is, you'll be able to uh, be able to print that in the same uh, in the same overall build. So that way, you only need to take out the material once. You only need to go through the cleaning process once. You'll just pull both models out when you're going through and doing the cleaning. So Sorry, I give think... me a mic check. <laughs> How are you oh, doing, Foldy? We're, we're good. I just want to make sure that we didn't get you putting it on, but did get you after you put it on. <laughs> but I think, uh, I don't know, I think that about covers it for yeah, the Fuse Yeah, for the Fuse one. anyway, we did have another thing that Formlabs dropped on, on everybody, and that's called the Form Cell, which yeah. is an automation uh, program. I'm assuming that's only for the Form 2? Yes. Okay. Yep. So the, uh, the form cell, basically it tries to automate the whole, uh, or a good chunk of the post-processing. So it tries to automate taking the build plate off of the Form 2, mm -hmm. putting it into the... Uh, into the isopropyl Clean, alcohol, yeah. so cl the cleaning solution, and then basically putting it on a tray so that it's ready for someone to come in the next day and uh, do all the post process, you know, like finish yeah. post processing, take all the supports off, do any sort of finishing that you need to do. I think there's four printers. Five. In this? five. Yeah. Yeah. So it has up, up to five printers. So it's it's interesting to see how the 3D printing market starting to go to more of these cells. Like you had Type A, kind of I think really pioneer. Yeah, I, I would say they're the first ones. Six printer setup. 
And then, I mean, then you look at, uh, I think MakerBot was, was doing some of that a little bit. Yeah, with their innovation, innovation lab stuff. labs. Yeah. And now you see Form Labs doing it. So it's really going to be interesting to see how this transforms into the next thing. You know, now you, have, you, know, you look at Voodoo Manufacturing with their automation and their yep. cells. You know, how is this going to kind of go to the next level after right. uh, after this? What is this going to transform into? Right. It's going to be really cool to watch. And the big thing with the automation is, so there is still a lot of post-processing that needs to be done by hand. You still need to pull off all the supports by hand. If there's mm -hmm. any sort of other finishing you need to do, that still needs to be done by hand. But what this type of automation allows is for the printer to continue printing stuff out overnight. Let's say you're printing out... Um, a bunch of dental stuff. I don't really know much about dental stuff, but let's say you need to print out a thousand of this particular thing or whatever, maybe a thousand different a variations. Clip for yeah. plastics. So basically short run production. If you just if it's a build that only takes two hours, if you start it before you leave for the night, okay, it runs for two hours, but you're not gonna be back in the back in the shop for twelve hours. Well that's ten hours the printer's sitting there not doing anything. It could be producing, it could be kicking out more parts. And now with the cell you can have it take the build plate out do the whole post-processing, put a fresh build plate in, then when your employees come in in the morning or you come in in the morning, you've got 10 different build plates that are all ready to go and you spend your entire morning doing the support removal mm -hmm. instead of just doing a little and, bit of support And they removal. call that lights out manufacturing. They yeah. already do it with injection molding um, and some other processes. But I mean, there's a guy I think in Northern Minnesota that he just has a warehouse and he just walks in, checks a few things, turn, literally turns the lights off and leaves. <laughs> And yeah. then he comes in the next day and does the same thing. Make sure everything's all right. Maybe grab a couple parts, check some resin, then he leaves. Yeah. Um, so I think we're going to start seeing more of, more of that getting to that point with 3D printing. Now, is it going to catch up to more of your mass manufacturing's injection molding? I guess we'll just have to see. Yeah. Yeah. What I was hearing in the video, like someone in the comments said, I didn't want to comment as us publicly just because I don't want to be snippy. But someone was saying, why only 7,000 views? I mean, first, it's only been out for a couple days, and... Only 7,000 views on the video? Uh, on one of the YouTube videos for the... I don't know if it was the Fuse or the... Uh, yeah, it, whatever. Yeah. Um, but the, my, my thought was, they, they said it in the video that there are only 25,000 of the Form 2 out. Yeah, well, so, I mean, I mean, only. I, saying, I mean, when, yeah. you, when you do only... 20, 25,000 is a pretty good number, but, yeah. you know, it's not the biggest... It's not, the, it's not like Disney put well, it's not. Video. It's not like MakerBot. I think yeah. they have 80-some... <laughs> I think oh, it's it's got to be somewhere between sixty and eighty thousand. I mean, I think that was a year ago. Is when they said they had like eighty some yeah. out there. I think. Yeah, and no, I mean, just, it, it's not the it's not the largest. One how and X Y Z are cleaning house volume wise. Yep, but when you look at the form two, those tend to be professional users. Mm -hmm. They tend to have higher throughput. A lot of people once they get a form two, they end up getting another one because whatever process they're using it for, it works out so well for them. I mean, what, for us, we're not quite keeping our one form two busy, but it. I mean. Not fully busy. It's not twenty four seven. It's like it's, it's we got a, a couple good prints a week, a couple three, I'd three say to four th days out of the week. Yeah, it's yeah. it's busy work. Say more days than not, it's doing without, something without weekends. Yeah. yeah, and we're seeing some. I mean, we're seeing a variety of orders. We're seeing some little one off parts. There's a there's a uh, a pie girl uh, emulator. That, uh, I was like, oh, where is this going? <laughs> I was like, there's a girl with a pie? <laughs> well, no, I'm pretty sure that's what it's that, called. It, yeah, the, sure the pie, pie girl, the Game Boy uh, emulation yep. system. So we had one Actually, of those, you know, the and that's, you know, that's kind of like a one-off. But then we have another customer right now that is printing 30 of a particular piece. And it's for, uh, he's testing some board game pieces out for a game he's developing. Wasn't there one that was doing some uh, train stuff? Yes. Yeah, so very fine, kind of one-off stuff. So really pushing the limits of what uh, what the Form 2 can do. And I mean, some of the parts very he was printing. Very gorgeous parts. Yeah, I mean, very well designed. A train car about the size of a roll of pennies. Wait, I mean, a gum pack, something basically, small. if you're familiar with model railroading, it's an HO scale, like 1830s era steam engine. And so it's very, very finely detailed. But you can see even the little rivets on the uh, on the steam, or, you know, on the on the boiler, on the on the engine. And it's, it but I mean, that's great. even pushing, that's even pushing what, SLA can yeah. do. Period. I mean, there you almost once be he, better off. Once he painted it, it looked. Yeah. Oh yeah, and we still need to share that out over social. I have the photo. I've got the finished photo. Oh, really? And the, I haven't uh, seen it. On. I know. I'm <laughs> got stuff going yeah. on. The thing, the thing that we're fighting with that that sort of project is just the details are so fine, and yeah. you need to have that. You know, you need some support material on it. Uh, and I know we were kind of working on that. Yeah, I'm so trying to figure out support placement and yeah, putting supports in, in spots so that you don't break the print. Now, I will say with the Form 2, I had my first failure a couple days ago. That was an experience. <laughs> um, so it wasn't a huge part. I didn't waste a whole lot of resin. I wasted maybe 30, 30 to 50 milliliters. So it's still, it's still waste. Um, but 
I didn't realize that some of the parts didn't stick firmly enough to the build plate, and so they basically stuck to the bottom of the resin tank. Oh. And so the laser kept going over the same spots over and over and over again. Oh, because it pretty much just it lasered it in place without yep. it. Okay. Exactly without the without the build plate not pulling the parts away. Materials I'm not or? quite sure because okay. I ran the exact same file again after I cleaned the tank and got everything it's running odd. again, and it, <laughs> it worked just fine. No errors. No uh, no print quality issues, but cleaning it out was a little bit of, uh, was an experience. Yeah. <laughs> it's really not that bad, but it, it just, I was already here late that night when I noticed that it wasn't working, and so it just kind of killed my mood for yeah. the entire rest of the evening. You need which some is, paint, paint funnels well, or whatever. Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly what I use. So basically some paint filters, and I didn't realize this, but you actually use a, uh, a paint scraper to scrape everything off the bottom of the, uh, off the bottom of the tank. So basically what it is on the bottom is a, it's clear acrylic with a sort of silicone on top of it. So you need to be careful not to scratch the silicone, gouge it or anything like that, but you can squeegee it decently enough. Yeah, and there is someone, uh, I think, trying, I think they're called Z-Trays. I forget exactly what they're called. They're on Instagram. I'll put it down here if I can find it. Um, they're on Instagram and they yeah. make a glass replacement. Oh, so that'd be interesting. They're a little more into. expensive than the MSR, you know, whatever, MSRP. I think yeah. that's the expression. Uh, they're a little bit more. I'd say they're about 100 for, per build plate rather than I think it's 60. Yeah, because I mean they recommend with the. I'm the thinking. Six, oh, I'm sorry. The um, uh, the the resin tray. Right. I said that wrong. But no, that's it's fine. Yeah. Resin yeah, tray, not build plate. Yeah, because the sixty dollar ones they recommend that you replace every basically every two liters of yeah. material because they they do cloud up eventually. But I know that uh, Jake and I we've got about another two minutes that you we. You have can like thirty here. seconds for me. So, I forgot. I lost my phone somewhere, so I'm gonna have to go find that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I think that covers the form lab stuff. Yeah. And so the uh, you want to talk about Marcus's printer just really quick. Yeah, kind of a real teaser fast. For that. Real fast. Uh, there's something called a hang printer. You use a lot of fishing line and a really strange configuration. It hangs from the ceiling and the walls. Um, you you essentially have unlimited build area. However big the room is. That, that, so you know, Marcus has his dining room table. Yeah, his dining room table is now his build surface. Blows my mind. Yeah, so um, we'll get Marcus, either I'll go visit his apartment um, or he'll come up here and talk during one of our podcasts and I'll get some B-roll. Yeah. And uh, yeah, look it up. It's called Hang Printer. It's from a guy from, uh, I don't remember a country, but it's got a crazy... Oh, with a cr like a, <laughs> I, I can't probably, remember. Probably country. Czech or I Polish should, or something should, like no. that. Uh, but really crazy smart guy. There's a couple videos online. He made something called the Tower of Babel, and it's really, really t four meter tall print. Holy smokes! Yeah, so. yeah. So you have that to look forward to. But for this week, uh, that's our show. If you have any suggestions or things you'd like us to talk about, oh, and this is a really big Oliver, <laughs> 24 inches tall. It's gonna slowly move into frame in front of my face. So that's oh, it's been there the whole time. Oh, it's been there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice. It came out of nowhere. Um, it's been there the entire time. This was about a somewhere between 55 and 60 hour uh, print. 50. One. Oh, so that's not as yeah, bad. It was still two days. Yeah, so it's still a long print. This was printed on the Ray's 3D N2 Plus, uh, 24 inches tall, printed in 3D fuel. Um, APL, dust, APLA Plus. APLA Plus, yeah. So you could probably hit it with a hammer. We haven't tried that yet. <laughs> we could probably hit it with a hammer and <laughs> it'll, it'll survive just fine. Yeah, I imagine we could anneal it, but the trying to well, find something that some, we could anneal this in would be tricky, and, and there are overhang issues. And, yeah, and there are some issues that I ran into when I was printing this. It was more with the raised 3D, just some print settings that I would change yeah. if I did it again. So I'm going to try and print the big MakerBot castle at one point, mm. but I've got the raised 3D busy doing customer work right now, so that's going to have to be put off for another day. Yeah, but, and if you like this model, go to 3D Fuel, 3D-Fuel on Thingiverse, and it's just called like Oliver <laughs> Rabbit. I'll share that yeah. in the comments below. Okay. But on behalf of myself, John Schneider, Jake Clark, Eric Faldi, want to thank you guys for watching another week, and you'll catch us next time. Bye. Right. Maybe I'll right. actually be in this one. For we more actually wrapped that up quick. That was good. <laughs> I need to find the phone.